let's say you could be potentially having sex on, for example, your left side of your vagina and you could mm -hmm. be ovulating on the right side. Yes, yeah, so that's a possibility. That's where the fertility issues come in. I would not be able to get pregnant that way. Paige D'Angelo tiene 21 años y es de Estados Unidos. Es bailarina, tiktoker y dueña de una característica única en el mundo. Tiene dos sistemas reproductivos completos. Es decir, dos vaginas y dos úteros. Lejos de ser un inconveniente estético, la problemática que Paige describe va mucho más allá. Debido a la duplicación de su sistema reproductivo, menstrua dos veces al mes y le resultaría muy complejo quedar embarazada y llevar dicho embarazo a término. En el Vivir Siendo de hoy vamos a conocer su historia completa, cómo se enteró, cómo es la relación con su novio y por qué decidió contarlo públicamente a cientos de miles de personas. Ok, Paige, ¿cómo estás? Bien, ¿cómo estás? Gracias por tenerme Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure for me to have you here. Yeah, I'm really excited. I've done a couple uh, interviews on articles uh, and I did a Born Different episode, but I've never done a Zoom or face-to-face -face interview. My main audience is in Argentina and in Latin America, so uh, probably a lot of, more of people will get to know you. Well, I'm excited to get to know them as well. I will start right from the beginning. You were born with two reproductive systems. What does that mean? So I was born with two complete separate reproductive systems. Um, when I was born, I, it's during this phase called embryogenesis. Um, you are actually born with two reproductive systems. Every female is, and they usually mesh in that phase and mine didn't end up meshing. So they stayed as two. Um, so basically it's two uterus, two cervix and two vaginas. It looks, everything looks normal and most women live their lives without even noticing that they have it until they go to try to have kids or if their gynecologist catches it. But yeah, so I didn't know until I was 18 that, that I had it. For example, the two vaginas, they are separated from like uh, something? Yeah, so it's a septum. So um, there is in my specific, there's so many different versions of the condition and ways that Um, people could have this condition. But for me, there's just a septum that goes all the way down from the uterus to the opening and it creates two vaginas from the septum. How did you find out about it? So I actually had no idea, um, but growing up, I definitely had like pretty much everyone knows like the usual cramps that come along with periods and mine was just always twice twice as much. So I, I just always felt twice the pain, but I have a pretty high pain tolerance um, from being a dancer. So I just let it slide and say anything. And then when you're 18, you're supposed to go to your first gynecologist checkup. So I went and she spotted it right away. And she was like, I don't know what this is, but I know something's wrong. So we're going to send you for an MRI. I would come back to the next appointment with your mom. I went to the appointment by myself. And um, she sent me for an MRI and then that's how they found out. And what did you think when they told you about it? I think being 18, I, I thought it was kind of cool. I was like, oh, I got like a little medical anomaly. Like that's pretty fun. Um, and then the logistics came afterwards and, and that was harder to deal with. But um, at first I just laughed. I was like, this, if you knew me growing up, this is something that would happen to me. So it's like, uh, just another thing. But yeah, so at first it was funny and then it was not so much funny. Having two uterus, that makes you have two periods a month? Yes, yeah, so there are two separate cycles. Um, sometimes they sync up, so they just come as one, but taking, there's different methods to reduce the pain, um, different birth controls that you can take and they'll alleviate the pain or at least like try to regulate the cycles. And that's been like a huge help is, so it is, um, it is controllable to that sense. I'm sorry if any of my questions are too personal, but I'm trying to like order them in my mind. So no shame, no shame. Let's say you could be potentially having sex on, for example, your left side of your vagina and you could mm -hmm. be ovulating on the right side. Yeah, so that's a possibility. That's where the fertility issues come in. Um, if I were to be ovulating on my right, that is the side that I would need to be having sex in to become pregnant. So if I was having sex on my left and ovulating on my right, there's no way that anything would be able to get to the right side. So I would not be able to get pregnant that way, but it is something that you can plan out with a fertility doctor. Um, I'm not trying to have kids right now, so I usually don't think about those things, but um, 
it is that is a problem when it comes to having kids. Yeah, because I, I watched I watched one of your videos on TikTok and you said something that it made me think. You said something like you could be pregnant on one side and keep having your period on the other one. Yeah, so that's another tricky part is um if I were to get pregnant and I did have it on the right side, um I would still ovulate on my left side. So the biggest sign for women that they're pregnant is that they miss their period. But for people with my condition, you don't miss your period because you just keep having period on the other side. So it's uh, there's a high chance that you could be pregnant and just have no idea because you're still ovulating. And um, that causes extra stress and anxiety too when you're 21 years old. But um, yeah, it's definitely something to keep an eye on. I've never met anyone personally with my condition. Um, I'm in a Facebook support group and there's like over a thousand women that have some form or have children with the condition. But ever since posting on TikTok about the condition and doing interviews, um, I've been connected with so many people around the world that have it and so many parents with kids that have it. I think it's like a less than 0.5% chance that women have this um abnormality and for my specific anomaly I guess you could call it there's no there's not even a name for it because not enough people have it or could research it so I told my doctor to give my name as <laughs> as the name for the condition since they found it mm -hmm. on me first yeah so there's really not many people to to talk to about it besides the world so uh how did you decide to go public I remember I was in my dorm and you live with three other girls your first year and I was going back and forth to school every other day for an MRI and I wasn't telling them what it was about I just met them and I thought it was super weird at first and I didn't think it was like something exciting to share I kind of thought it was like shameful like I shouldn't talk about that like it's too personal yeah. and it got to the point where it was pretty suspicious I was going home and getting an MRI every week I was going to the doctors all the time so finally I just told them And I just, just was laughing and maybe crying a little. And they were like, oh my gosh, like, that's so funny, but it, it doesn't, you shouldn't be ashamed of that. You shouldn't have any problem sharing that, especially with your roommates. And so from then on, I slowly but surely started telling people. And sometimes it would come off as a joke and like people would like sort of make fun of me for it, but I can take any hits for it. And um, other people, they were super curious and super supportive about it. And then it got to the point where I was like, I'm tired of just hiding it. And I know there's other women out here that are ashamed of it too. And I know there's 13 year old girls in this group that are so, feel so ashamed of themselves and feel so different. And so that's when I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna post that I have it. The goal is to find a couple other people that have it and let them know that it's okay. It's something you can talk about not anything you have to hide because your story uh is is uh, raising awareness on the subject it's difficult to speak about something that is so personal you know and to share with the world so i think it's great that you can like use your platform to speak out for all the people out there what is like the main question that you get asked <laughs> um can i see it <laughs> can i see it the <laughs> that's literally what uh, most people say is can i see it or what does it look like And I tell them just to Google it. It, it. There's diagrams all over the internet for it. Yeah, that's usually the most common question is, what does it look like? Uh, can you have sex? How does this work? And I know that those are the questions that are going to come to people's minds. So I'm not offended by them because the whole point of me sharing this is to let people be more comfortable talking about their own bodies. So uh, yeah, they don't, they don't offend me at all. Is it more difficult uh, to have sex or, it does, or does it have any difference? It honestly doesn't, um, but that is very unique to every case. Okay. So for my case, just the way that um, my septum falls, sometimes people like girls will have a vagina that is like a quarter of the size and the other one's like three quarters of the size because they all take up one space of one normal vagina. So like some will be like super small. And for those cases, it, it can be harder and it can have difficulties and um, complicate things. But for mine, it, it, never, it never complicated anything. And 
that's part of the reason why I never found out that I had the condition and part of the reason why most women don't find out till they have a baby. So just to clarify, you could be pregnant. Yes. So I can conceive. Um, the chances of me conceiving are lower because of this septum, because it would be hard for the sperm to get to the other side. And so it's basically like the chances are cut in half of me conceiving. But um, the issues or fertility come in with carrying the child full term. So it's very common. Um, second trimester losses are very common due to the fact that it's just it's just half the size of what a baby is normally. And there are women that have this condition that have carried a baby full term and have a natural childbirth. But there's other women who have had five to 10 miscarriages before they could even um carry one child like almost full term so it's definitely individual but it does complicate fertility a lot having this condition has it affect you in your personal relationships um it hasn't affected me in my relationships it's definitely um been just like a somber like burden when i hear about like having kids and everyone always ask the question, oh, how many kids do you want? Like, do you want boys or girls? What order do you want them in? And my answer is always just, I just want a kid. <laughs> That's all I could ask for, just a healthy baby. Um, I don't really get to, I mean, I still do dream about the perfect Uh, life but yeah that's definitely something that's hard to talk about uh, especially at my age it's so early and I can only imagine it's only going to get harder once my friends all start having kids but that's the emotional side of it personally in my relationships I have a boyfriend right now um, the only thing that it has affected us is that people ask him about it too so the publicity part of it since I went public about it obviously people on my page know that I have a boyfriend and they would a lot of people direct message him with no filter uh, no regards to our privacy but that's that's what the internet is so it's nothing that I can I, I'm surprised by at all. Is there anything else you would like to say? Just the whole reason that I am doing this because I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of questions. I get comments saying you're just looking for attention and you just want people to like, you just want follows. Put all that aside. The only reason I'm doing this is to just share my story to be more comfortable with my body and give other females and anyone with any condition the chance to feel more comfortable about themselves, talking about their stories and Overall, just building a better community, more accepting community when it comes to medical anomalies. I really appreciate you having me on, though. Thank you, Paige. Thank you for being here. It's an honor for me to have you here. Uh, your story is so unique, um, and I think it's really brave that you are speaking today. I appreciate uh, your mission as well and your channel, and you're doing a beautiful thing to the world. So thank you, too. Wow. Thank you for being here. Have a nice day. Bye -bye. Have a nice day. Bye.